Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm really excited to bring to you this really sturdy folder that I've made for die cut and stamp storage. And as you can see, I've filled this one with butterflies. The reason I've got it working both ways is if I store it horizontal, it's easy to see. If I store it vertical, it's easy to see. So I've also got this tab here, so that can sit on the outside. But if I hold it up, you can see then that it kind of squashes. And then if you put it on a shelf and you want to put more in, things catch. I've designed it purposely to go on the inside like that so this cannot be squashed it stays the same side both ends so when you're storing it's definitely going to be that width and it's not going to change it's going to be that width at both ends so inside what I've done is I've had it had it <laughs> I've added acetate to some folders which I'm going to show you how to make everything there's magnet sheets on this side and the reason I didn't go right to the end is to be frugal because you know your um, dies will stay as long as they've got a bit on the magnet they'll stay in place so we've got acetate to put your stamps on too so they're just like the backing sheet that they come with you just do away with that and pop it onto the acetate acetate sheet that you've put inside of your folder so when you've got matching dies and things which i've got one here so i've got the dies there and then i've got the um, matching stamps here now i know that's not butterflies i have got a butterfly sheet this is just put in here just to show you what to do that you what you can do even so each side has got an acetate sheet but alternatively you could make yourself something like vellum envelopes i've got one here and they could go in the place of where these sheets were so you could have envelopes and things to put your cut dies in you could have paper instead of acetate or you could have nothing at all and just have your magnetic sheets the only thing i would say about that when it's magnet to magnet touching you might want to put a bit of card in there because you know it doesn't really affect it too much but when you stand it up they just want to be together they'll just stick together like they won't stay apart like that so i've wanted dye and stamp storage for so long and I wanted to organize my stamps and dies into categories like sentiments, men's, children's, things like that. This one's going to be a whole one full of butterflies and that's pretty much all the butterfly dolls I have but I haven't been through my stamp collection yet to find out which ones I've got. Now you can put magnetic um, closures into this but being magnetic sheets I didn't really want to do that either you could put ribbon around it you could add a belly band around it but I just want it to be like this it's literally just storage so for me this is what I want to work and it's really really sturdy it has to be because that is pretty weighty it's seven by five inches so it's seven high by five inches wide closed and it's one and a quarter deep in inches and i'm going to show you how to make it so let's get started so grab yourself a paper and pad and pen etc to jot down these measurements because there's quite a lot or re-watch the video just watch me demo it then re-watch the video later and drop the notes down, pause it, etc. What you're going to need are three sheets. Now, they don't have to be identical. I just chose to do it that way. This is Hunky Dory card. It's a really strong card. I suggest that you use something strong as well. I realise there's a lot of reflection on this card, so I'm going to switch when I do the one with lots of folds in it so that you can see it a bit better. It's a plain card. Um, there's a front, a back and an inside piece. So there's three pieces to make the actual folder. Then all the inserts come after that. So they're all seven inches high. And then you'll need the front one to be 11 and three quarters wide. The back one, sort of like the, you know, this is the front fold. This is the back part. That's going to be 11 wide. And then the inside bit with all the mechanism for all the folders to link to is 10 and a half inches wide but you want to make it very slightly smaller than 10 and a half and that'll become apparent soon why so what we're going to do is i'll just start with the biggest one so that's our 11 and three quarters and with the right side up you just need to score that at one and a quarter and six and a half and that's all you need to do for that one one and a quarter six and a half there's not a lot to do there here with the outsides so the reason i've done this is that folds over now and then this bit comes in like this so this is the outside back piece or one of the outside back pieces 
and then this is just making that a double thickness of cardstock and if you've got cardstock that's you know single-sided it's nice to have the print on the inside and then all I'm going to do because we can let this dry oh got some pretty color on my glue don't know what's going on there um is just put some glue or tape whatever you want to use whatever your preferred method is just inside of here and then fold it over squash it all down and that's your front done so that's the front section done so obviously you would spend a bit more time and get the glue right to the edges and i've got glue all over my hands just going to rub it off like that and then just pop that to one side and then we'll move on to the next size down which is 11 inches okay now this is our back piece our 11 inch back piece um, with this one you can have it right side up but I actually like to do it wrong side up because if you've got a pattern like I'll say head feet things like that and it matters then do it upside down and do these measurements the measurements are sort of like the other way around on on the other side so what we're going to do is we're just going to score it one and a quarter here and I'll tell you what the measurements are if you want to do it the other way around so one and a quarter six and a half seven and three quarters eight and three quarters nine and three quarters okay now if you were doing it right side up and you were starting this way around which you probably would you'd well you'd have to if you want to do it this way it's one and a quarter two and a so yeah one and a quarter then two and a quarter three and a quarter four and a half and then nine and three quarters but the way i did it was this way around we did one and a quarter six and a half seven and three quarters eight and three quarters nine and three quarters so it's quite similar in design now the one the way this one works is this again is going to be folded in half and glued down this side but there is a score there and what you might find is when you fold that in it may become a little bit tight now if it's okay like that then you can glue it but if it's going over that score line then it will become a problem so I'm actually going to go and take just a little smidgen off because I do think that it helps so I'll just pause and do that okay so we've got that I've just taken a little bit more off so it's not on that score line because these all fold in so I'm just going to fold this in like that so fold all of these score lines that you've done like so and this one over here them all going so what happens is this folds around that way so fold it in half fold these four that are on the right hand side fold them in half and then fold that over as well this is that little tab thing and that's the, the front you see so what we're making effectively is the front and the back so that's that tab so if you wanted to put magnetic closures you could hide them in here um, before you close it up but I don't like I say I don't want those on my project so if you do that's fine and if you wanted to have ribbon or anything like that to tie on to to tie the front then you can so you only really need to put glue on one side i know i did it on both but just on two sections either ones front or back and then just get that to go i want to get glue on the scoreboard hopefully i won't it seeps out the edges so just give that a really good while it's wet so you want a card as well when you're making these you want a good card that can take a good score as well without cracking or breaking so the card that you're planning on using like construction card just grab it and start scoring it quite roughly to make sure that it can withstand because it's going to be moved around a lot as well if you're going to be using your dies quite a bit and your stamps so we've got our two sections there so they will eventually go together but not quite yet and then our third one which is our smaller one which is our um, ten and a half inch long one seven high ten and a half wide and you need to, to make a little smidge off of the ten and a half as well so just cut a little bit off because it's going to sit inside here and again you can try it before you pop it in because you do not want it to 
um, get in, interfere with that bendy score line because it will affect the work and it will crack and bubble. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, that's so shiny and there's a lot of scores on this one, so I'm going to actually take a piece of playing card and make it. I've already got one that I've scored and done, but just to show you how to make it, I'm going to take this blue one and we'll do it with this one. Just move that board, then I? I don't want to move it because I want you to be able to see. So what we're going to do with this one, you've got your ten and a half obviously going lengthways like this. Now there's a lot of scores to do. Now we're going to get all the way to five and a quarter and the rhythm of it is a quarter of an inch score, half, half, quarter, half, half, quarter, half, half, quarter, all the way to five and a quarter. Now, if you want the exact measurements, I'm going to give them as I go. So, jot these down, okay? So, you're going to score at a quarter of an inch, at three quarters of an inch, at one and a quarter, one and a half, two, Two and a half, two and three quarter, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four, four and a half, five, and finally five and a quarter. Okay, so that's all the scores for that piece. Um, now what you're going to do is make all of these scores fold again if you want to you can turn it over um, and redo all of those measurements you can see where the lines are you don't need to measure them but you could if you score cut both sides it loosens up all the fibers and makes it easier to maneuver so just go over where they are all right so i'm just going to move this scoreboard out of the way a minute It'd be easier to show you with that so basically all of the half lines so you've got a half and you've got quarter lines here so the quarter lines all come forward okay all of them and the half lines go backwards now if you want to manipulate all of them the same way and then turn some back you can that's fine you could just get them all going this card's not very good to use for scoring that's what i was saying to you about getting the right one it's good at scoring but I thought you might be able to see a little better there's too much shine on the other one to see what I'm doing so we're going half halves and quarters as you can see so just reinforcing all those folds we've just made yes that's it all the way up to there so the quarter of an inch is all stay forward and the half inch is back so now you can sort of like pleat it if you like accordion it so that quarter's got to come forward. So does that one. Then the halves go back. I think they're all coming forward anyway, so I'm just going to do the halves back. Halves back. And then eventually you'll be able to gather them once they've got enough fold in them. And they will have a flat piece at the back. So they'll be like this. So you can see you've got all of your upright folds and then you've got all your flat pieces in the background okay like that when they're all butted up together so now what you need to do is turn your card over and on every like there's a half inch there and a half inch there so there's a valley fold okay so there's half and half so what you need to do here is just get a bit of tape And just put it on one side of that half fold you don't need to do it on both so every time there's a half fold do this just pop tape onto there like that like that move your tape fold in your half move your tape fold in your half Move your tape, fold in your half. It's quite easy. There's a lot of measurements involved in it, but and then there is your piece. Now, the other thing is, this back bit here is going to be going, that whole measurement there, you can fold these out of the way, but these little quarter inches all need to come to one and a quarter now because there's folds in there, there's a chance it may not. So what you can do is offer it up. Let's get the right bit. 
so this is the back bit so the back bit it's got the front fold like that this glues onto there okay so that's what's going to happen this is where i was saying you need to take a smidge off here if that's going to interfere with the score line this one isn't going in here because i've already made one and i need to check it in a minute but you'll probably find that when you put that down that's going to be too big so you can either glue it down and cut it off which is one way of doing it or you can do it another you know the other way so these will all fold and i suggest you do this as well once you've got those tapes in place, they will be able to, you'll be able to push them back and forth like that. So just do that and get them going because that's what they're going to do because they're going to have their um, pages put onto them if you like. The other thing I like to do is fold it flat. Oops, won't go flat with that there, will it? And then grab, I've got red liner here. So you can just grab tape because you're just going to be able to put it all down and just completely cover the whole of this back with tape like that and then you'll need to put more tape on that side as well but like i say i did one already in the color that i need so i'm just finding that which is this one so i've done exactly the same thing the only thing i've done on that one that i haven't done on this one yet is cut these angles off and the reason i do this i'm going to show you on my finished one is if you didn't you've got acetate and I cut the angles on acetate as well all of these little bits here would have a layer of card a layer of card a layer of card a layer of card acetate acetate tape 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 it's just too much so cut the corners off and give it a little bit of you know not so much thickness between the pages at the tops it's okay down through the middle but it's just on these half inch ones here you just need to do that so all you need to do just grab all of them one by one and you don't measure this you're just only going to that score line though so where the half and the quarter are there don't cut the quarter just cut the half so basically you're just doing that at both ends okay so you're just going to take and it doesn't matter if they're different each end or each one you're just going to angle all of those so that they're not being bulked at the top here that's the idea of it so i'm just going to move all of this out of the way so that we can continue with our putting our um folded together so hopefully this see for me that's gonna what will happen you see is it will buckle and because there's so much weight on there what it'll do is it'll give it it won't give rather and it'll crease so we might get away with that one it's okay or you could take a little bit more off i think that one might be all right as long as i get this bit in and actually the overhang's not too bad either because i cut that one down already so as you can see i've got tape all over the back just like we did just now and these all fold flat so i'm going to take the tape off and my tape doesn't go all the way to the edge um sorry all the all over it because there was too much in the way so what i might do is because you you want this to be secure but we are going to secure it even further in a minute when it's all together put a bit of glue down that one just for wiggle time i might put some glue over parts of it and hopefully that help me line it up so i want to get this i'm going to fold that flat come up i don't want you to go on there yet i'm going to get this into here and make sure that this side is okay so i'm going to pull that up make sure it's dead straight as well top and bottom a bit fiddly to get this in position so i'm folding that over to make sure that that's not going to move like that and then i'm going to lay that down and then lay that over the top of it you can see i've cut it possibly a little bit too short which is okay i'm just going to fold that over before it's too late just capture that give it a good old rub down like that see yeah, i went on a little bit off now if you go a little bit off and you've got some overhang at one end and not at the other you can trim that off you're not going to see these in a minute but if you've got overhang like i have here because i didn't line it up very well then you can cut that off for sure that's fine it'd be better to you need it to so it'll stand up nicer in your unit so that's that bit done and now we can attach that to the front and then we'll have our folder so we're going to attach this to the front so what we're going to do is just put one bit of red liner across there like that i 
Oops. And again, I think on this side, because it's not the shiny side, I'm just going to put some glue around the edge to make sure that it captures everything. And then we're going to attach these two together. So again, I'm going to make sure that I'm butting into this. So the back piece needs to butt into the um, front piece and be level. So hopefully, I'm going to rub all these down again. These are getting a good old backwards and forwards fold, aren't they? <laughs> and you can see that one was out because I cut it too short, but I'm not worried about it. I cut it crooked even. But I'm not worried about it because we're now, that's together, but with all paper and card, if you pulled on it hard enough and with a lot of weight going in with the magnets and everything, there's a possibility that it could come loose. So what I decided to do was grab some ribbon and you can use colour coordinated ribbon if you want it's only skinny ribbon don't even know what size it is does it even say uh 50 meter roll that's handy isn't it that's helpful nope <laughs> it's small isn't it was an eighth of an inch quarter of an inch let's have a look eighth so you're just gonna put your ribbon on here you see so you're not gonna see everything that you went wrong anyway so what we're gonna do is flip this over and we're gonna put I don't know if this is too big really, too much overkill really, but never mind. Better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? So I'm going to pop some tape on the back. Now if you don't want to do this ribbon bit and you don't want to add another border, um, like a back piece there, because it is all very neat, and you just wanted to put your name on there, you can risk it and hope that it doesn't move, you know, in time. This is just an added precaution. So all I'm going to do is just angle my ribbon until it comes where I need it and I'm going to wrap it hopefully you can see because I'm moving too much I'm just going to wrap it around all of these bits keeping it really tight and taut so I'm pretty much binding it together so like I said you wouldn't see that bit down there and all the pages and everything are in it'll be fine I'm just going around every single section on the outsides and all of the insides as well. All like that. And you'll see on the back it's just wrapped around. And then I could just take that back up through, put it on that red liner tape and snip it off. So we've pretty much bound it with ribbon now so it's even stronger, more together. Okay, so what you want to do now is add a piece a bit here. You want to cut it down so it's one and a quarter by seven so I've cut it down to one and one eighth um, and then I it might still be a little bit long actually I might slip a little bit of the edge of that you don't want it to overhang I want everything to be within there so I think first speed I'm just going to use wet glue I'm just gonna oh say gonna not going to gonna weird isn't it just gonna am I down with the kids or something what's going on midlife crisis crazy so there we go that covers up the ribbon mechanism and now you can add your if you're having sentiments or flowers or you know whatever you're putting in there really you've got a little note place to jot that down and you can do it with dies you can do it with peel offs you can do it with i'd use um a dymo dymo reader so just make sure that's all squashed on give it a good old squashy squash and there you go so you've got your basis of your folder now the only thing you've got left to do now this one's stuck down but we've got to stuck, stick this one down and i just really want to make sure because i can still cut a bit off here by pushing everything back out the way i can still cut that down so i'm just going to check that it does fold over and it doesn't go all funny before i glue this down then we're going to pop that one down so and you can see now it's become a very sturdy folder, which is definitely what you need when you're putting so much cardstock and magnet sheets and acetate in there, etc. So you just fold that in, and there's your folder made. So now we're down to doing the insert. So it doesn't take too long, does it, really, when you think about it? And like I say, that piece there, you can make belly bands. I, I do it like that so that it stay. like I say, when I squash it together, and you can see that the back is not glued to that yet. make sure they stay so I'll just push that to one side and then we'll crack on and we'll make the insert parts 
So what you need for the inserts are, just going to grab them, oops, leave that, I've hid them underneath the scoreboard, I'm coming back very soon. So what you need are some acetate sheets, some magnet sheets, and some um, glues and things, which we'll get to in a minute. So, the sheets you're going to need, okay, you're going to need to cut four pieces of card. And these are seven inches high, everything's seven inches high pretty much, apart from the magnet sheets. So seven inches high by ten wide, okay, that's what these are. So you need to score them in half, so I do need to scoreboard. I do need to scoreboard for more than this as well. So just score them at five, and that's halfway. Fold them in half. Make sure the tops and bottoms are level. Fold them in half like that. And then the next thing you want to do is add, add, <laughs> add your magnetic sheets. And the reason you want to do that is I've done it on another folder that I've made because I've made a few of these now. And what happens is that you have to move all the acetate out of the way. It just It's too much and then you've got to try and get the sheets in place. So I just add like four strips to the non-shiny side of double-sided tape, just normal tape. Now, I used to hold these magnet sheets up on the wall and cupboard units and all sorts when I had my other craft room, but I don't have room to do that. So this is why I wanted storage and I wanted it all sorted out as well, which is going to take probably about five years to be fair. <laughs> but I'll get there. Just keep making these folders and I'll be there. So just four strips of tape on each one. And then you're going to put a magnetic sheet. So this magnetic sheet was A4 in size. And all I did was cut it in half that way and cut it in half that way. And it gave me four pieces for my 7x5 folder. Then you're just going to centralise that. And obviously it's up to you how much that matters to you. Just centralise it. Flip it over. Pop one on the other side. Don't worry about um, upside downs. And things like that at the minute it's not important oh hello friendly fly thanks for popping in could really do without you it's not my breathing it's a fly <laughs> so we've got our two acid our two magnetic sheets on there and now we're going to add our acetate so you need to take a piece of acetate and this is a different size this is obviously seven high and because I used A4 acetate, I just cut it in half, which was five and seven eighths. As long as it's over five inches, so you've got a room for a bit of fold, you'll be fine. You're scoring it at five, so you're scoring it at five and it's seven high. Okay, this is quite a thick acetate. So we're going to do it twice. Fold it down like that. So you've got that corn fold on it. Now, the easiest way to do this is to put tape on it first because we're going to cut the corners of this. Pop tape on it first. And then if it overhangs or it didn't quite ma reach, it doesn't matter. Because now what we're going to do is on from that fold inwards, any size, we're just going to angle. Take those bits off. And that's all you need to do for that. So I've got another one here because you need two for each one and the tape needs to be on the inside of these as well. I think I've put it on the outside so I'll fold it the other way. Am I like? Shocking behaviour. So what I like to do with these is take off the tape, get your folder, the open bit, so you've got the folder bit in the middle. Keep that sticky bit away from it and just make it square. Okay, so use your pans to make sure top and bottom and on the base it's in place. Then on the middle section, push down and move out like so. And then that will secure that. Sorry about that, the phone rang. There's always something in there interrupting these videos. Get everything ready. <laughs> so, take the tape off this side, do exactly the same thing. So, just get your magnetic sheet side, fold at the bottom, 
pop that on there keep this stick out of the way don't want it to attach to anything and then just use your fingers hands even to make sure that it's at the bottom then in the middle and push out so what you've got there are your pages because the opening bit is going in those folder bits so you need to make these and you need to make four of these okay so I've got four ready and then what you need to do next is bring your folder back in and you're going to be taping but you don't tape this you tape the insides of these so you're going to be taping these I've already got ones with tape on I'll show you because it's going to be obvious that I'm going to be putting four in so if I show you one that I've got taped already and you don't have to use big tape like this it's just that I had it to hand and that was the best thing to do so let's take that bit off there just do one at a time as well just use one side put it next to making sure top and bottom is level okay because you don't want it to be all out of sync top and bottom is level and then you can either pull this down but you this is really thick it's probably better to stand it up but to be honest it is easier to pull it down and i've allowed enough room these are five and the fold is five and a quarter so if it's not touching fully it's okay so if it's easier for you to do it this way and not stand it up like this because you might go off of where you were you can angle it in a little bit and push it down like that okay so that's on there and then what you need to do is take this one off this side and then get some glue and the reason I didn't use glue is because it needs to be something really really strong now I can put a bit on there needs to be really really strong to keep all of this together and you want your glue to go to the edges I'm doing it quick but you want your glue to go to the edges so it's all folded up nicely and then you'll just lay it all flat get those ones out of the way because it's going on to that one and push it down give it a good old score rub it down like this and that's your first one in so you can see you've got your first one in you've got your acetate sheets there so they've become a page You've got your two magnetic sheets and then you've got your final acetate sheet there so i'm just going to put the other ones in so if you want to watch that you can but obviously um if not then bye and thank you for subscribing watching and liking all of my um videos i do appreciate it but i'm just going to go through now and just finish this one off i've already got the tape in place so if you want to watch that again ah oh, had the tape in place put it on this one definitely on this one so what you need to do now is so in, if you didn't want to use acetate this is where you would change it for like a vellum pocket or a piece of card so take one off only top and bottom needs to be level and right up to that score line down there okay so get it as close as you can to the next one like so stand it up a little bit i hope you can see i'm not um interfering with the camera lens too much get that to squash onto there that's the next one then we can take the tape off of this end because that will capture capture it in between so you're literally trapping it between the folder and then you need to have your glue all over this like so And then take it down and rub it all down and make sure they're all secure and now we've got two pages okay so you've got your acetate sheet for that one your acetate and with acetate you can just fold it and it will open up nicely you know if you push it that way it will stay wide open if you push it that way it will go flat to that so if you've decided to put a piece of card on this side and a piece of acetate there and that's going to be your stamp protection then that's fine as well you can do it that way but that's how you do it so i'll just continue and finish this i've got another folder then how exciting so another one to fill i think it's going to be sentiments you know i think it's really handy to have all your sentiments in one place i'm forever going through my dots trying to find sentiments i think it's going to be a good shout that to have sentiments again 
that's really it's not that hard it's a bit fiddly at first but when you've made you're not just going to make one probably are you you're probably going to make a few more but once you've got that you know you know what you're doing even make a template one just use like thin card paper that's not important to you and don't cut your magnets and your acetate and things just do it do it with copy paper just have a little practice get into the swing of it and then you'll know what you're doing so all i did was the inside of these is just add tape over the acetate that we'd already secured on the inside so i'll just do this final one so acetate to there and there like so and then there and there like that and it doesn't matter if you had a pattern on your paper then it would matter like which way up you were putting these into your folder but I have used plain cards specifically so I don't have to worry about things like that and it's all getting covered up by magnets so there's not really a lot of point in wasting um, pretty foiled paper so I'm just going to pop that in as close as I can get it pop that down and this is the last one and you'll see the folder completed whoops Remove the red liner, glue all over, and then this one goes where it goes, it just falls over, and where it lands, it lands. And then what you'll see is you've got all your magnets, they're not glued together yet. Like I need to squash these down, I need to spend a bit more time squeezing the glue in, which is why you want to do it and get that glue in. So you can see there you've got your sheets, I'll do it this way, you've got your sheet, magnetic sheet, etc. And they'll all move about, add your stamps in there, add your dies in there, and pop your label on the back. And then just to store it, just pop it up like that and put it in your rack. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.